okay, it looks like we are going live. So, let me do a quick introduction of myself and tell you about the office for the people. So, if you don't know me, my name is John Fox, and welcome to the link. This is going to be the theme of our lesson today, at least from the beginning. And uh, I will be the link. Uh, and we're going to talk about a little bit fun. We're going to do an, uh, an exercise, which I think is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, it's called a memory map. And we're going to look at a few examples. This was done as an experiment, uh, uh, and it was turned into a book. And we're going to read a little bit about how the book was created. And uh, the experiment, look at some examples. I'm going to give you a chance to make a memory map. So the idea is that there's, oh, look, there's a new plane. We're coming to Paris in this. Let's we'll see here. Um, oh, I'm going to just fix the audio because we're going to, I'm going to hear myself speak. Let me see if we can mute the audio. Okay. So, you don't hear me well. Uh oh. Let me, let me make sure that the audio is working. Should be. I don't know if you can hear me a second. Let me just see. Oh, it looks like it's okay. Let's see if other people have difficulty because it looks like the series is okay on your side. Let's try that. Um, just a quick word uh, before people start calling me the code. I got it now. Hi, Fabian. Can you hear me? Hello? Hey, Hello? there we go. <laughs> there was a, Sorry, there, were, there was an audio issue on my side, but I fixed it, so I don't think anyone could hear the uh, introduction. Okay, so I'm going to just have to mute um, Javier. I think it's Javier because I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting a background noise from somebody. Javier. So Fabian, make sure that the other window is closed because I'm getting a lot of background noise. I I, may, I don't know if it's you, but I'm muting you temporarily. Okay. Um, so let's go with Javier. You were the first in. Say a quick hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hey, hear you there. now. Where are you from? Hello. Hello. Um, hello. My name is Javier. I'm from Spain. I live in Palma de Mallorca. Oh, my goodness. And what's, what's the weather like there now? It should be beautiful, right? Yeah, yeah. Really, now it's sunny today and the sky is blue. Really, it's a good temperature. <laughs> oh, my God. It's rainy and nasty here. Terrible. I'm in Portugal, <laughs> by the way. Not that oh, far. Well, Not so far away. <laughs> no, too far. So in the, you, you are in the north, Portugal. No, no, in the south, in Lisbon. Oh. Sure. And it's normally sunny, but today it's yeah. horrible and nasty. I yeah. maybe I, later I can put the camera out the window. You can see how bad it is here. Anyway, uh, I feel warmer already just talking to you. <laughs> so listen, uh, uh, in the beginning of the class there was a microphone issue, so I don't think you heard the introduction. I was saying. Just a quick introduction of the lesson. We're going to try a little experiment. <clears throat> there was a, a book that came out in the States. It was an experimental book where people had to give their own map of a place where they lived. And the place, in this case, was New York City, the place where I'm from. So we're going to try something similar. I'm going to show you some examples of the map. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to show you some examples of the map. And um, you're going to use it to uh, hopefully get inspired 
and give your own personal geography of where you're from. If you've been to New York, you can add to the New York memory map. And I'll talk a bit about my own. So I put the link there. Uh, but anyway, that was the part that we missed in the very beginning. So I apologize about the microphone problem. Uh, let's just do a few introductions of people that I don't know. So I said hello to Javier. Uh, uh, we have, of course, Igor from Madova. We know Igor. Hello, Igor. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, Inga from, um, I know where you're from, but now I'm blanking. Wait, wait, wait. It's Armenia. You're in Armenia. Yes. Yes. I remember now. John, are you sick today? No. Why? Um, don't know. Just your scarf. Um... It's cold. <laughs> yeah, really? Yes. It's cold. What can I do? You do not have heater in the home? Uh, they don't exist in this country. No one does. <laughs> you have to... <clears throat> it doesn't get cold enough to, to, to get a heater. I mean, so, you don't need it. You don't need but, it. But it, it's cold enough to, to, to be uncomfortable, though. From one or, of our lessons, uh, what's the weather over there today? I mean by degrees. <laughs> Good question. I wonder what it is. I don't know. Uh, I would say it's probably 15 Celsius, I would say. Probably. I'm not sure. I'm very bad with Celsius. In Fahrenheit, it's probably, what, 60, a little less than 60, 57. But it's like cold and damp. And um, I'll tell you what, I'll take off my scarf. There you go. Is that better? OK. Yeah. I don't want you to worry about me. And I want you to see my neck. OK. There we go. <laughs> So now that the rest of you think I'm crazy, let's get a few introductions. Uh, Carl, Carl, I don't think I've met you before. Say yes. a quick hello. I am. I am uh, in Basque Country. Oh, great. We're almost neighbors. Almost. Neighbors, more or less, yes. More or less. Yes. <laughs> a um, and uh, Judy? Where are you from, Judy? Hello, Judy? Judy, Judy. Judy. Where is Judy? Okay, we'll get back to Judy. Uh, by the way, make sure that the um, <clears throat> verbling window is either closed or that the sound is muted. Not the hangout, but the verbling window if you have it open. Because, yeah, I was just hearing my own voice. Um, and uh, Ahmad, Ahmed, are you there? Say a quick hello. Hello, Abdul. Okay, <clears throat> so I, I, I see Ahmed, but I don't hear you. And Abdul. Want to say a quick hello to the group, Abdul? What, what's going on today? <laughs> Everyone's having microphone issues. It's the screen. Okay, I can see you, Abdul, but I can't hear you. Make sure your microphone is on when you speak, Abdul. Say a quick hello. Oh, and Judy, you're using yeah, the well, regular chat window. Uh, go ahead, Abdul. Say a quick hello to the group. Hello, my name is Abdul. I'm from Pakistan. Um, I work as a recruitment officer in a government company. Uh, I had you in another class. I remember you. Yes, once before. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, make sure that you all um, open the link. Uh, that I put in the Verbling page. That means go to live classes. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me give you the link here, too. Hold on. I'll copy and paste it for you. Copy link address. Paste. I'm going to paste it in the regular chat window. And I'm going to paste it in the Verbling chat window here. There you go. OK, okay so there's the link. And what we're going to do is it's not an article, but there's a little description we're going to read together. We're going to look at some examples, and then I'm going to give you a chance to do your own memory map, or just describe it for us. So uh, I'm going to share my screen, which wasn't working, but now it is. So you should be able to see this on your side. Hang on a second. OK, so when you open the link, you will be here. It says, Mind of Manhattan. Can everyone see that? 
Yes. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we're going to read through this. It's really short, and just make sure that all the vocabulary is clear. But our main goal is to have you speak. So we're not going to worry too much about the vocabulary. Um, Inga, do you want to read the beginning for us? Yes. Go for it. Manhattan of the mind. Mm -hmm. I remember. Can you read, the, uh, yes, can you read the little slug line underneath the, uh, the title? If New York were a blank slate, how would you feel it in? There you go. Do you know what, do you know what they mean by a blank slate? What do you think that means? And, and this is for anyone in the group. What does that mean, blank slate? Sometimes you'll hear the term tabula rasa. Yes, it means um, clean blackboard. That's it. <laughs> so if New York were a clean blackboard, uh, how would you fill it in? And what would it mean to you? So we're going to think of this idea of not geography. I know you like geography, Nina. Uh, Nina. My God, what am I saying? <laughs> uh, what was the question you asked yesterday about the about the largest country, Inga? Yes, me. I asked. I know, I know. What was the question you asked? Well, it was what? Well, which is the largest, the largest land land? Oh, yes, sorry. Something like that. Okay, largest area. So you are our geography expert for the group. <laughs> but we're going to look at an idea of a personal geography this time. Not real geography, but personal geography. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify what blank slate meant. This is a, a real idea, I mean a real thing, but also a philosophical idea. What is a blank slate? How would we fill in this concept, this mental concept? So personal geography. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Inga. I remember standing at the top of Manhattan and being terrified, says Becky Cooper, the 25-year-old New York native behind Map Your Memories, a project she started in uh, 2009. Cooper hand printed hundreds of blank maps of Manhattan, each self-addressed and stamped so they could um, be mailed back to her. Then she and a friend trekked from Marble, the very top of the borough, uh, um, down to its southernmost point, handing the maps out to strangers with one simple instruction. Fill it in with whatever best captures your experience of the city. Right. Could you summarize that in like a sentence? Just reduce that idea to about one sentence. What's the gist of this? Mm. <laughs> What's the, when I say gist, I mean main idea. What's, what, what are we learning in this first paragraph? Mm. Something like uh, this uh, girl uh -huh. uh, suggest all uh, guests uh, of um, his city to fill uh, the blank map cards uh, as mm -hmm. they um, imagine uh, their city, something like yeah. that. Yeah, 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 okay. And you can even see an example there. What do you think about that example, Inga? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you see it? Yes, uh, the first picture, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm, it's all green forests. Mm. Exactly. I'm, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I hope that you all have the link, uh, but I'm not going to share my screen because I, I assume that you're going to have the article open. It's just because I can't see your names if I, if I share my screen, and I want to be able to talk to everyone. Um, so uh, we've got some new people here, too. So hopefully you're all going to get a chance to do your own map in the class. If you don't have the link, it's there in the chat window again. Okay. What do you what does that map I mean, what does that map tell you about this person's idea of Manhattan? Do most people think of New York as being green? <laughs> this is for the group. What does that tell you about this person's personal geography of Manhattan? Yes. Well, I I think the Manhattan in my mind. Yeah. Is 
I never been in, in New York, but I think uh, it's full of the building. It's yeah, a, full of the building and a lot of people. I don't know, but no green. <laughs> no Not, yeah, we wouldn't associate it with being a a green place. We wouldn't associate it. With the, yeah, there you go. I agree. And yet, and yet, let me tell you, if you go to the middle of Manhattan, it is green because you have. A huge park, Central Park. It is. Uh, you're right. Most of it is shoulder to shoulder buildings. Mm -hmm. But it, but it seems to me that this person did something in Central Park, or maybe uh, this person, I don't know, had this had a dream that New York was the opposite of what it really was. We don't know. This one, there's no words. But it's interesting. It's a different take. Um, so let's keep reading. Uh, there's only it's, a, it's only three paragraphs, okay. So can I, a, a, Igor? Why don't you do the second one for us? Okay. A month later, Cooper was flooded with mail. Each uh, returned map offering a small, uni unique. How to do this one? Unique. Unique self-portrait. One plotted uh, heartbreak sites, another uh, documented uh, a sighting of Salvador Dali with his pet ocelot. Oh, yeah. uh, Cooper compiled the maps into a Tumblr page. At around the same time, she uh, started work at the New York. Uh, at the New Yorker, as the assistant to Adam uh, Gopnik. Yeah. So the New Yorker is a magazine, a literary magazine, in in uh, in New York, but nationally. And so she's working for a writer at the New Yorker, mm -hmm. who became a mentor and uh, advocate for the project, and who wrote the, wrote the foreword to a coming book. Mapping Manhattan. Uh, the book collects uh, both uh, the submitted maps and ones that Cooper commissioned. Commissioned. Commissioned uh, from notable New Yorkers. Okay, I want you to do the same thing. Give us the gist of that paragraph in about a sentence or a sentence and a half. Keep it really short. What's the idea? That's you, Igor. Yes, yes. <laughs> if there's any questions about vocabulary, ask, because I don't want to focus too much on new vocabulary. But if there's anything oh, you don't understand, is, uh, just ask. Tumblr page. Tumblr is a, is a one type of blog that you can make. Uh, and it's, mm -hmm. it's more for visual things. It's really good with images and sound and video. But it's basically another type of blog. You know, most people maybe use WordPress or something like that. Mm -hmm. This one is really good with media. Actually, I have a Tumblr page. It's really good. And pet ocelot? Yeah. It's pet ocelot or pet. Uh, so this is this is an animal. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a Wikipedia on ocelot so we can see what it is. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to give you a quick Wikipedia. Wow, these things are really amazing. Look at this. Hold on. You know what? Why don't I share my screen for this? Maybe it's easier. Hold on. Uh, I don't know if you can... Ocelot. Okay. Yeah, do you see it? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want an ocelot? Huh? Look at that. Everyone would like to have one. I'd like to have two. Okay, there you go. So, okay, any other vocabulary? Not clear? Okay, so I assume the vocabulary is clear. How would you sum it up, that paragraph, Igor? That Cooper compiled the maps in the Tumblr page. Okay, and, and who made the maps? Um, <laughs> Adam Gopnik. No, no, he didn't make the maps. He was her kind of her mentor. So what, what's another word for mentor? If you had to substitute that, what would you say? Salvador. This was say again, Salvador please. Dali. Salvador Dali was the mentor, no? No, no, no. Adam Gopnik. <laughs> but uh, let's substitute the word mentor for something teacher. else. 
teacher. Okay, fine. <coughs> not, ex not exactly teacher, but but informally a teacher. Informal. Sure, informally Tutor. a teacher. Tutor, yeah. Yes. Maybe that's even a better one. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, Leader. okay, Igor, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last paragraph. Maybe I can have Abdul. Would you like to read the last one? Yes, of course. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. <clears throat> Kubo says she was inspired to start the project in part by 2007 internship at Culture Now, a non-profit organization form of 9-11, which she was tasked with finishing a map of Manhattan's public art space. I'm really, really bad at geography, she says. But I think it's helped me to see map more at biography. Right, biography. 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 Okay, great. So, um, there's not much to summarize here, Abdul, but what's the main idea for you? Why don't you reread it, uh, not out loud, just reread it in your head and tell me what's the main idea of the last paragraph? Mm, actually, in this paragraph, Cooper actually inspired by an innovation after 9 11, right. and uh, which she went and she uh, and she think that it helped her mm -hmm. to understand maps as more than biography. Right. So yes. instead of looking at maps as something, um, l let's say, uh, outside of yourself, something that is that is not related to you, she saw them as something personal. She could see them as something more personal that tells stories. So I thought that was an interesting idea. Um, what I'd like to do is let's look at a few of these and then I'm going to ask you what kind of map would you make? So I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to turn it off when I'm talking to you but I'm going to share it and uh, I wonder if I could make this a little bit smaller. It's a little hard to see but I don't think I can make it smaller. Okay, here on the second one what I'd like people to do is maybe um, <clears throat> read the title, and uh, maybe they maybe you could just tell you say how this map uh, makes you feel or what you think about it. So the second one is actually I'm going to ask people to talk about it. Uh, maybe I could start actually with oh see my computer is slow. Maybe I could start with Carl for this one. Mm -hmm. We're on the second image. Could you read the title and give us your opinion? Yes, the title is off, off the grid, no? Yeah, off the grid. Off the grid, yes. And I, and I think uh, the map is very interesting because uh, uh, see or he will, uh, this map, uh, thinking uh, what experience have uh, in some towns, in some streets, and uh, along, the, along the city, no? And it's yeah, very, yeah. Or remember yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some of the things that it says, if you, in case you're not looking at the link, if you're looking at the screen, I know it's hard to read. But mm -hmm. on the top it says, learn to dance. Yeah, and learn to sign. Where, where learn to sign? Where uh, write a cheeky lead? Uh, and when uh, was uh, very nice later or, or all that thing? No? Yeah. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. this. It is interesting, and it's even more interesting if you if you know the city, because yes. I, I I know the areas very well um, because I lived there most of my life, <laughs> so I remember it. It's a little hard to explain, but we're going to see some others that are more about the actual um, uh, geography. Hold on, let me see if I can just like for example, downtown you see red love letters, mm. and they're right. And it says press pause. Press pause. That's at the World Trade Center. <laughs> that's what used to be the Twin Towers down there, or Battery Park. And then where it says, uh, like for example, uh, on the other side it says, I can't really read it really well. Uh, hold on a second. Take long walks. That's in Chinatown. So it, it, it sort of gives me an idea about what this person was doing and where they were. Okay, let's take a look at a few more here. Um, I'm going to have to 
switch back here. Maybe I would like to get some people that haven't spoken. So um, uh, I'm going to try to go in the order that you arrived. Uh, I think, Judy, you don't have a microphone working. So I won't call on you because you can't speak. But Javier, I, th I saw you early, so maybe I can have you do the third one. So take, read the title and tell us your opinion. What do you think? OK. Uh, just, uh, Patricia Marx. Patricia Marx, right. Well, um, well she is my last gloves. Well, he is uh, re make me reference to he maybe she lost her gloves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lost her gloves, right? Um, how he maybe he, he she tried to show how how she felt around the city without her gloves, or maybe she was worried to find it, or or even she found other other kinds of, of things that she says also. That uh, lost wallets, earrings, a zipper, yeah. umbrellas. So well, uh, he lost uh, lost um, um, but, um, many things around the city. So I suppose that every day should be very um, very items lost in this uh, big city. I suppose. Yeah, and notice at the bottom it says it it talks about a writer Proust. It says Proust's in yeah. search of lost time, volume one. Uh, what does it say? Uh, but there is only so much I can draw. So she lost a copy of a book that's about losing memory <laughs> or about regaining memory. Proust's book about remembering the past. So, so what do you think about that? What's she trying to say? And this is for the group. Why do you, why do you, I mean, for me, the moment I see Proust, I, I begin to see another side of the map. What is uh? What do you think she's trying to say there? This is for the group. Anyone can answer here. Does that change the way you see the map? If you know that, for me, it's kind of a joke. I she lost. Yeah, go ahead. I can understand very good. What is the pr Proust? Proust, the writer, the the French the writer. The French writer. Yeah, and the book in search of lost time, mm -hmm. right? Is a book about losing your memory or regaining your memory because oh. right because Proust suddenly remember in the in the book he re he remembers uh an episodes of his life that he had forgotten for many years and they come back very vividly okay uh, really Go ahead, yeah. probably she she uh, uh, some uh, was remembering something or what something happened to her in Turkey because only one of the globes is uh, with a signal and then yeah. in question Turkey maybe I don't know really yeah but it's Turkey the bird not Turkey the uh, country yeah, yeah. oh yes oh yeah yeah yes it seems a bird yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> okay yes when uh, you're so when you're uh... <laughs> then I I'm, and then I'm lost also <laughs> okay it's because when you're a kid and uh, you're in you're in kindergarten uh, there's a, there's an activity that everyone has to do where you have to we uh, let me let me turn off the screen sharing hold on there's an activity where you have to uh, put your hand you know like in paint and touch the wall oh, yes. and then it looks like a turkey so you have to learn how to draw by using your handprint putting a little beak putting little feet and everyone makes turkey because we eat turkey at Thanksgiving in America. That's the the official bird of Thanksgiving. So all all kids six seven years old or younger have to learn to make turkeys. So she probably looked at her map and remembered, or maybe she has kids and thought, oh look, there's a turkey. I don't know. Anyway, if you went to kindergarten in the states, you can everyone can relate to that because we all have to identify with Thanksgiving. So that's that's my take on the map. Um, Okay, maybe we have time for one or two more. Let me just see if there's a, a particularly interesting one here. Okay, this one is kind of interesting too. This is not a drawing. So let me share my screen and you can take a look. And I'm going to ask, hold on a second. Uh, 
maybe I, we can talk to someone who hasn't spoken before. Uh, Sharif, are you there? Yes. Hey, Sharif, where are you from? I'm from Egypt. Okay, nice to have you here. So, yeah, thank you. I'm sharing my screen and I'm on the fifth map. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to either open the link or if you can read, if you can read my screen, I'd like yeah. you to I'd like you to read uh, the map by Richard Goodman. So he's a he's a he's an American okay. author. Okay, so I I can start now. Please do. Yeah. Everything significant in my adult life has happened in New York. I owe it so much. My last apartment in, in New York, 183 Pinehurst. Pinehurst. Pinehurst Avenue. Pinehurst, pine, like, like the tree. Yes, Pinehurst Avenue near Washington Heights. It was from here that I drove to, to see my daughter graduate from high school. All like a dream. I pedestal from my apartment at 103. The you know one hundred and third, and receive side drive good, to the yeah, world. Good. Yeah, continue. Yeah, please. Okay, so I bicycle from go my ahead. Yeah, I bicycle from my apartment at the one hundred and third and receiver and the Riverside Drive to the World Trade Center disaster site every day for three months and read about what I saw. Fall 2001. My beautiful daughter, Vicky, was born at London at Lenox Hill Hospital, October 23rd, 1993. In the 30 years I lived uh, in New York. Stop there for a second. Yeah. Stop there just for a second. Uh, just uh, I want to give uh, someone else a chance to read it as well. Um, okay. And maybe we could talk with uh, Desarolo. Is that right? Uh, I, uh, yes, but my name is is Jose. <laughs> Oh, hello, Jose. <laughs> Jose, make sure that you have the verbling window with the audio turned off or close the verbling window because I'm getting a lot of background noise. I'm hearing my voice. Okay, Jose? Okay. So, Jose, could you read the last two, um, uh, the last two uh, texts at the bottom of that map? Okay. In the 30 years I lived in New York, I walked its streets day and day out. Day in and day out. Oh, I'm still thinking my voice, Jose. If it's not you, someone's got to turn off the verbling window because I'm hearing my, definitely hearing my voice. Okay. Is, is it now better? Let's see. No, no, I'm still hearing it. <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. Uh, maybe it's someone else. I can't tell. Anyway, we'll go go ahead and I'll I'll mute the person later. So go ahead and speak. Okay. Uh, day in and day out, getting to know it as I got a friend, which is worse. I wrote my first book, French Dread, at 29 West 28th Street, in a friend's uh, loft, 1990. What's a loft? I think it's a kind of apartment with uh, a very little walls. It's like Correct. It's, it's, it's usually it's big, big. Okay. and no walls. And no walls. Okay. 111 East 10th Street, my first uh, New York City apartment, 1975-1978. Uh, a dream of a little one bedroom on a Jesus Street. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Jo Gorgeous. Gorgeous. What? Well, I'm gonna try it later. <laughs> the first, the first G sound. Gorgeous. There you go. There good. Go. Good. 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 Okay. Thanks. All right. All right. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna mute you for a second and just see. Yeah. When I mute you, uh, Jose, then I don't get that sound. So I think it's coming from your side. Okay, so if I had to create a, a memory map, I can tell you uh, I can tell you a little bit about what it would be. So I want to share mine, and then I'd like to hear what yours would be like. I'd like you to try to describe it. Uh, 
what do you think? By the way, what happened to Javier? <laughs> We've like lost people. Um, uh, first of all, what map do you think I'm going to make? Map of uh, Portugal, maybe. You would think so, but I'm not. <laughs> because I have no memories here. But I have lots of memories of New York. <laughs> so, if can everyone picture the uh, the map of of Manhattan? You remember what it looks like, more or less? I'm not going to share it on my screen, but you can picture it, right? What number of the between? No, no particular number. Just do you remember the shape of Manhattan? Let me. Uh, for example, if we look at this one, let me go back here. If we look at there we go. If we look at this one, I can't really make this small, I don't think. Let me see if I can make it a bit smaller so it fits on screen. Mm -hmm. mm. Ah, there we go, yeah. There we go. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, and hopefully you can see it. Okay, can everyone see what it looks like? I, I, I reduced the size. It's like uh, a gun. Yes. It's like a what, Inga? Gun. Gun. Uh, uh, depends on what kind of gun. <laughs> it's it's Kalashnikov. Kalashnikov. <laughs> I don't know what they look like, but I believe you. Uh, okay, let's let's go with that. It looks like that. Um, so here's what I would do. At the bottom of my map, uh, where you see, uh, I can't put it on the screen, but at the bottom of the map, in this map we're looking at, you see 110 East 10th Street, blah blah blah. You've got a point, and that point is where the World Trade Center used to be. So I would have a, gi a giant sun, a big red sun, and probably the shadows of all the buildings uh, headed going away from the sun. And here's the reason why. I remember when I was old enough to leave home, uh, I remember when I, I remember the day I became an adult because I was driving from uh, where, I, where, I, where I was born, which is a city <clears throat> two hours from New York, and I was driving to New York City to go and live there, and everything that I owned was in my car, right? In fact, it wasn't really my car. <laughs> it was, it was my, my, my father's car, uh, but, but he let me drive to New York. So I was driving there to go to a job or an internship, and uh, when I crossed the bridge from New Jersey going into Manhattan, it's really hard to explain, but the sun was rising because I, I, I had to go there. Uh, I had to be at the job at, I don't know, 8 or 9 in the morning, 9 o'clock maybe. So I had to drive, get up 5.30 in the morning to drive there. So the sun was coming up just as I crossed the bridge. But the thing is, you have to go up the hill to get to the bridge, and then you start to go down into Manhattan. So when I went up the hill, uh, let me um, stop sharing my screen so I can see who's here. When I went up the hill, it looked like Manhattan, which I was seeing the whole city, almost, almost like for the first time, was rising up out of the ocean, and the sun was really red and big. And, I, and uh, it looked like kind of like, I don't know, hard to explain, but the sun was right in my eyes, and it looked like almost out of a movie. It looked mythical. <laughs> the city rose up out of the ocean, and it was like golden. Uh, and then I, uh, and it was like becoming an adult, because uh, I, I literally went from high school. I, I was doing some little courses, but then I went to school in New York. So I, uh, from that day forward, I was my adult life started and I was living in New York. So that would be my map. What do you think? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> it's an image I will never forget. Yeah. Has, anyone, has anyone been to New York? No. Never. No. no one? Yes. I would like to go. Who but, said yes? But always is very expensive. Hi, teacher. I am Rasal. <laughs> Hold on a second. Rasal, okay, I see you there. Rasal, why the lion? That's not your picture, right? Yeah, I like lions. Oh, I want okay. to be live like a lion. <laughs> are you, are you a Rastafarian, Rasal? Rastafarian. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> Never mind, it's okay. You are Rastafari. <laughs> Who's Rastafari? The the people in Jamaica with the great music, and and their symbol is the lion. Oh, uh, okay. No, I'm from Asia. Okay. So tell me about uh, if you had to make a map of New York, what would your image be, or what would your map be like? I'm just curious. Mm. I I was there for just two days, uh, and uh, I went to en enjoy with my friend on the Manhattan and right, right. Uh, we were we were walking uh, in the Manhattan street uh, in front of uh, Madison Square Garden okay yeah big stadium uh, yeah <laughs> but we uh, didn't get a chance to See from from street from inside. So uh, the neighborhood. In, uh, Sorry, and just yes, a, one one. Yeah, I was going to say the neighborhood around Madison Square Garden is uh, is the part of New York that I like the least because it's so <laughs> it's so com I, I don't like that area because crowded. it's so commercial. Yeah, New it's York crowded. is very crowded. It's re really. Yeah, but not all of New York. I mean, that part of Manhattan has so many of these little shops, but it, uh, it's the part that I like the least because it's it's the most crowded and the, and kind of the most commercial and uh, next yeah, to Times and Square. Also, that place I forgot the name, which is very famous. Uh, what street name is? Uh, I forget the street name. You mean Broadway? No, which is very famous, and they you drop a ball there yearly. Times Square, Times Square. Yeah, Times Square. We and visited Times Square in the in the night, and yeah, yeah. it it was full of people, <laughs> although it was slightly off season, but still it was full of people. And uh, then uh, one thing more that New York's subway system is full of. Crowd and <laughs> there's no place to uh, sit in uh, in the in the train, <laughs> and it's, we have we have to stand. <laughs> it's true to travel. It's true. It's it's very crowded, and you can be on the subway in New York for over an hour and still be inside of New York City. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that that's how big it is. Uh, yeah. Inga, I want to I want to ask you about this map that you shared with us. What is that? <laughs> Did you use it, in the internet is before? Sorry, say again. Uh, I asked you about. Uh, don't you see it before? No, no, I never saw this before. What, what is this? Sorry, say is this again? your map? I asked you about. Uh, don't you? Hold on a second. We're getting some feedback here. Is this your map of the world? <laughs> Not mine. So, in, what would your map be like? Where would it be, and and what would it, what it would, would it be like? What, is there an image that you would have in particular? By the way, I'm hearing a lot of typing, so make sure everyone's microphone is off until you're speaking, okay? Because we're getting a lot of background noise. Inga, tell us about your map. What would it be, and and would you have a particular image? I don't know because I haven't enough uh, life experience uh, in traveling. Well, what about where you're from? These are personal maps, right? So, what about where you grew up, or or where you've lived the most? What do you think? I lived in Russia and in Armenia. Now I'll, I'm living in Armenia. So, mm. so, if you had to, if you had to make a personal map of, I don't know, which which uh, did you always live in a city, or did you live in a little village? No, in the city. So, which city do you think you could map? Or do you want to think about it? 
Yes, I want to feel <laughs> ask someone else. So who wants to volunteer? What would your map be like? You heard my, my Manhattan map, right? I could do one for Lisbon where I'm living now as well, but my memories from Manhattan are a lot stronger because I was younger and it was a life-changing moment. Uh, and here, I, I came here to live and to work, and then I, I left and I came back. But I'm still living a life here, so it's just somehow not the same. So childhood memories are really strong, or young adult memories. So what are some other ideas? Does anyone else have an idea for a map that they would share? Remember, personal map. What do you think, Carlo? Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, I remember when I was uh, down outside. Uh, mm -hmm. I I I I live in in a villas, uh -huh. and I can remember I I can remember very clear uh, where was my place favorite for games with friends, for example. Uh -huh. And now uh, I can remember when I uh, I went to to build to city to live with my family. Uh -huh. uh, I remember very clearly where uh, I was studying and uh, where uh, I was um, with my friends uh, taking uh, taking or uh, in a parties or right. in some cases. And and now when I uh, in this moment I remember. Uh, where is my favorite place in the city? So I'm sorry, but which which city? I didn't. I my yeah. city is uh, Victoria. Castell. Victoria. Okay. Yes. So is there one? Is there one? If you had to draw it as a map, is there an image that you would use to symbolize that period? Hmm. Uh, remember, mine was I would do a big. I would create a big sun. Right, because I remember this image of the city like it was, like sort of golden in the sunlight. What would yours be? Uh, can, I can't remember very good. Can you repeat the questions? Could I repeat mine? You mean the, the questions? The question. I can't remember. Oh, I, can, oh, oh. I can't understand very well. The, what is the your question? Oh, my question was, if you were going to draw a map of Victoria, yes, what would it look like? Would there be a particular image uh, that w that would be on the map? Yes, my particular image uh, uh, could could be perhaps green, green and uh, and very open, open okay. for wall around the city, uh, very open and very free. Okay, great. Sounds interesting. Yes, <laughs> Igor. Where are you, Igor? Did I lose Igor? I lost Igor. I can't believe it. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about... Uh, let me just see if I can get... see names here. Hold on a second. I've, I've, got, I've got some people coming and going. You know what? We haven't heard from... Hold on a second. Uh, Koji. There you go. Are you there, Koji? Yes. Hello. Hello, John. Hey, Koji. Hey. Um, so have you been following the class? I didn't see you in the beginning. Did you have a chance to see the maps we've talked about? No, no, I haven't. I, I joined just now. Oh, if you okay. want to go to another person, that's OK. Uh, someone please post the link for him so he can just see the, uh, the images we were looking at, OK? If someone has the link, that would be great. Actually, wait, I have it. No, never mind, I have it, I have it. Oh, Inga, you, you came, Inga came to the rescue. Thanks, Inga. <coughs> this is if you nice. want me to uh, describe uh, uh, my my neighborhood or my place where I, I I've been living since I'm a child, I, I can say that when I was a child, my place uh, it looks like an island. Uh, however, it's not an island, but my my neighborhood. Uh, it's like an island. I'm from São Paulo city, a very large city, but my very, neighborhood. Very, very large. Yeah, it's very, very large. I think large. it's the biggest population in the Western Hemisphere, or something like that. It's like thirty. How, how many millions of people live there? About f fifteen million uh, people around. Uh, not wow. only São Paulo city, but uh, uh, São Paulo and around. And 
and uh, but the neighborhood I I I, I grow uh, was a very very small with five the, or six. The neighborhood streets. where I grew up, where I grew up. Yeah, the neighborhood where I grew up uh, was ver a very small uh, place, and I enjoyed that a lot. Why do you say it was like an island? What do you mean by island here? It was it surrounded by water? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, because yeah, yeah, because it was an island uh, uh, between this uh, uh, very fast uh, sp uh, speedway uh, with a lot of cars. Uh, that place was uh, uh, isolated. I see. Okay. Um, and uh, and if you had to draw it as a map, that's what we're doing. We're creating. We're we're imagining what the landscape would look like if we created not a geographical map but a kind of psychological personal map that told a story so my map had New York with the giant sun because it was my first image of New York when I went there to live uh, would yours be an island what would your map look like uh, well uh... what's the one image that you'll always remember from your childhood Yeah, I remember that uh, there was a, a, a greenfield where we play soccer uh, and things like that. We play a lot there. So you would have an island with a big soccer field. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Something like that. <laughs> Sounds Something great. like that. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I, we've got some time, so I'd like to hear about some other maps. If you're just joining us, uh, we looked at some not geographical maps, but personal maps. And there's the link again in the ch Verbling chat window on the right side. So I'd like to hear some other people. Uh, you're going to describe what your map would look like and why, so we can get a sense of your personal memories. We want to know what the geography is like, but from your personal experience. Um, Maybe we can go back to, uh, well, actually, we've got some new people here, too. But, uh, Jose, if you're there, what do you think? What would yours be like? Do you have an yeah, idea? Yeah. Uh, hi. You want me to speak? Yeah, what yeah, would your what map would be like? OK. I think uh, my map from my city, which, which is Madrid in Spain, I think uh, it's, it's a map that going to Remember, I have of, of of a night. I mean, it's in the night, and I saw like a like a river of lights. You know, so I would make a map with a uh, night image. I mean, I mean, dark, and then like a river, but of, of lights because of the houses which are near the highways. Which, uh, so, in your memory, are you, are you looking, looking down, down at the city, city at night? At night? Yeah, uh, that's right. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I see a lot of lights, like, like rivers, <laughs> like, like the roads which are departing from Madrid. Really interesting. I can I can really visualize that. Has anyone else been to Madrid? I guess that we, you're the only one. <laughs> yeah, it's a big city. I I, I think so. <laughs> I can really visualize that because I've, I've been to Madrid, driven there, so I can really see what, what you mean. We've got some new people too. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jose. Uh, yeah, you, you were saying that you went to, to Madrid, and uh, I was uh, happy because of that. It's just oh. <laughs> I'm going to mute you for a second, Jose, because I'm I'm hearing my voice through your microphone. Uh, so if you want to speak, you can turn it back on. But yes, uh, my my memory of Madrid though is uh, during the day, uh, and it's just uh, I, I the only thing I can rem okay now you know I remember really bright hot sunlight, and I remember really white pavements like walkways, and a cafe. Uh, on the main street in Madrid, uh, one that you would know, I just can't remember the name. Um, but uh, 
I remember that, and I just remember the Prado museums. So I remember the artwork in the Prado. But I guess my 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 real memory of Madrid is just this really white, hot, intense light. That's what I remember. <laughs> Does that sound That's about right? right? Yeah, you were probably in in summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Was, no, I was no October. October. It, was it was October, but it was October. really hot. It was really hot. Wow. This is ten years ago. Ten years ago. Imagine if you go in, in July. Yeah, it's, it's very hot in the summer, and the light is is quite strong. Uh, I've I've gone several times to to England to London, right, um, right. and when you come back to 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 Spain, it's like if you turn on the light. <laughs> I know. I, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Um, um, I, I want to go back to Inga because maybe you've had. Let me just mute you for a second there, Jose. Okay, I want to go back to Inga. Have you? Do you have an image now? I'm really curious because I've never been to any of the places that you've lived, so I have no, I have no even concept of what they're like. So uh, you can think about your map from the point of view of a person. You're introducing them to the place where you grew up. That might be another way to look at it. So. What's a memory that you have, Inga? Maybe uh, Russia. I can describe as a very cold um, country. Uh, sorry. Uh, so my image will be uh, all uh, um, trees with snow. Um, it will okay. be winter. And in case of Armenia, it's. Uh, it will be with the nature and national fruits uh, like apricot, uh, pomegranate. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, are there are there uh, like pomegranate trees everywhere? Not everywhere, especially uh, in the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. Oh my God! Yeah. Say that yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been there. How do you pronounce that? Say that again. Uh, Nagorno Karabakh. Nagorno Karabakh. Is it right? Yeah. Wow, that's an amazing sounding place. I, I I bet it looks as good as it sounds. Yes. By the way, when you're when you're talking about uh, something like here, we're talking about an image, not a real one, but one we imagine. You can use instead of will, you'd probably use would. Or any of those conditional words. So, if I had to create a map, it would be pomegranate trees, or it would be snow uh, on all the rooftops. It would be because we're describing something that we can imagine. So, an imaginary present is usually with would, could, or should instead of will. Will is really more of a future. Um, uh, and which. Which place is a fonder memory? In English, we say fond memories, memories we like. Which is the fonder memory for you? I have been in Germany, and uh, I really uh, want to go back there um, because uh, I like uh, all. Uh, I mean, uh, precise uh, people uh, with strong um, um, culture, and uh, mm -hmm. if uh, I Pre uh, precise, what do you mean precise? Uh, you, you mean they they speak their minds, they're forward. What do you mean by precise? I mean uh, that they so that they. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, or give I give mean, an example. Give an example. Yes, for example, if uh, I uh, date you somewhere at five, you will be there at five, but not uh, five past five. Or oh, if, right, right, okay. <laughs> or, or if I take one from someone, I will uh, give back at at the time. So, so the so yes, precise is probably the right word. <laughs> I see what you mean. Uh, well, listen, everyone. Uh, we're, we're going to have to end this uh, in just a minute, actually, because I have a. I'm going to have a second class. It's going to take me a minute to change classrooms. But these were. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your memories. They were really interesting. And um, 
uh, I wanted to say that, uh, so this is a little bit different. Today I just wanted to have, uh, I think, I wanted to have, and I would like to continue to have, some of these open speaking classes where we talk about where we're from. Because one great thing about Verbling is that we have people literally all over, from all over the planet. And I think it, it's a great opportunity to try to learn something that you don't see in the news learn something from real people. So that was my intention today and I'd like to do classes similar to this in the future. So if you go to my, if you're interested in that or you've got suggestions, go to my Facebook page and write me a suggestion or tell me this was interesting and why. Uh, and you can of course follow me on Verbling. If you go to the, um, to the, uh, the class, click my profile and follow me. Uh, and uh, let me know what you think, and I'll, and I'll try to run similar classes or take your suggestions in the future. So listen, everyone, it was a pleasure meeting the new people, and um, I will see you in the next class. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Goodbye. Thank see you, you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.